there guys, guys and non-binary pals and welcome back to Transgender Thoughts. First one in a while. Um, it's not going to be about my surgery. <laughs> I am getting to it. I'm just working on a few ideas with it that I want to do it right because it's really important. But so is this. This is something different though. So yesterday um, a younger trans woman found me through YouTube and contacted me on Twitter and asked me for some, uh, started asking me for advice. And a lot of the advice was quite interesting. It was things like... Um, suggestions for a martial art you could do for self for self protection advice on gothic makeup i haven't worn gothic makeup in ages because makeup really damages my skin a lot i mean like that's from that little mark just there see that mark tiny bit of foundation was on my face for a few set for about three hours i didn't realize it because i don't even know where i came from i touched something and anyway i it was all quite interesting and really, really lovely, really lovely kid. Um, I don't say kid in a disparaging way. She's like 19. I'm 40 in March. To me, it's not that she's like a child, but she's younger. So it made me realize a couple of things, some really harsh things. So I transitioned at 27 and it wasn't immensely easy, but it wasn't as brutally hard as what it would have been for for trans women coming before me. There was a gender clinic, there was a gender therapist for all the world, for all that he was an absolute utter prick. Um, there, there were there were, if it's not even facilities, services available, laser hair removal. Uh, I was able to contact two different shopping, two big clothing shops and get um and managed to get a shopper to help me gather clear gather clothes um you know i was lucky i transitioned to 27 i transitioned reasonably well i mean there's adva i have certain advantages but i transitioned reasonably well i mean i'm not exactly a rampaging beauty but at the same time i do have d's you know natural double d's Beat that with a stick. But I've also been sick since I was four years old. And even then, when I was going through what I think of as a remission in the most severe of my... Uh, I did say this was going to be rambling and I was tired. Symptoms. The uh, My symptoms were much reduced, but even at that... I very rarely got to go, very rarely went out. My main social outlet was a tabletop role playing game I ran every Thursday and spending time with Tegan and with Claire. I did get to go out most days, but I can't say I particularly enjoyed it. I enjoyed being with my friends. I didn't enjoy being out because the whole time I was thinking, where's the nearest toilet? Um, how long will the painkillers hold out? Did I remember my emergency kit? Huge long list of things that were constantly going around in my brain because I'm chronically ill. And if you're chronically ill and your symptoms are things that can cause problems for you outside of your body, that's how you think. You plan ahead. It's that simple. The end result was that when that the first three years I would I would have considered myself a young woman first three or four years maybe five but I didn't particularly enjoy that time because I was sick I was sick all the time I may not have been as sick but I was still sick and uh, add in the fact that at the time I was very early in my transition I couldn't get a laser comp a crowd to do that would agree to do laser for me for the first year. When I did, the first crowd I went to actually were bastards. They put the intensity of the laser way too high to the point where I ended up with ulcers on my face, burns and ulcers and basically transphobic bullshit. Since then they've been shut down. They were sued and they were shut down. Bye bye. And, but because of that, I was living in a small city, like about 100,000 people. 
maybe a, well probably a quarter million if you include the transient population but you would see the same people day after day after day after day after day and i did become known as kind of the tranny around town it's one of the reasons i was i was happy to leave my hometown my home city actually it isn't my hometown but it is my home city oh my voice is rough today apologies for that three hours sleep folks um yeah but the end result of that was i was assaulted quite a few times i was pretty much almost living in fear and uh yeah it was rough but it meant that i didn't particularly enjoy the period where i felt young now i don't feel old i'm not i'm 39 I'm not even middle-aged yet, but I'm certainly not a young woman. And that combined with suddenly realizing that there are some people that consider me a role model, that scared the shit out of me. I'm sorry. That girl yesterday, she's not the first. She probably won't be the last to come to me asking me for advice. And it's like, holy crap, I have a responsibility. I have to make sure that what I say to them actually works and is actually right and that I'm not giving them bad advice because holy crap they're coming to you for advice you're a role model it's like when the hell did that happen I've only ever been a terrible warning in the past I've never been a like a, a shining example of anything maybe a scout leader I was a good scout leader but um, it, it's weird because it actually kind of is it's something that's after banging hard against my post-surgical dysphoria um, my physical dysphoria mostly comes out in the form of eating disorders I am anorexic I am bulimic and yes you can be both at the same time because when I prefer not to eat and when I do, I fight the urge all the time to purge. So it can be both at the same time. <sighs> at least I think it can. Um, and since the surgery, I haven't purged and I haven't starved myself. But I'm having to control this consciously. And I hadn't for a good while, probably about four years I hadn't. And... Um, it's really hard. It's really fracking hard. I am going to talk about that at length in the future. Just not right now. Um, so yeah, it's, I have that going in my head. And part of it is that I'm, I'm having trouble with mirrors. I'm having trouble with cameras. You know, Vlogging is great when you have physical dysphoria and you're looking, you're looking at a video of yourself and all you want to do is curl in the corner and scream. But I can't live like that. I have to take control of my, psycho my, psych my psychology and I need to take control of my body again. And for me, always dealing with my dysphoria and dealing with my eating disorders has been exercise. I was a rock climber. I was a good rock climber i was a scout i was a scout leader i ran i cycled like my average week was climbing five days of the week run three days of the week cycle about 20 miles on a saturday and then rest on sunday and when i say climb i mean about three hours per day plus running about five miles per day I really exercised and I was really healthy. I can't do that now. My health will not allow that. But I have weights and I'm working on getting some muscle tone back. I'm never going to be Zarya, but which is kind of sad actually because I really like that. <laughs> you know, oh, oh Zarya is. Mm. Mm. But, uh, I'm working on that. I'm doing what's double time. What I don't know the proper name for it, but I, I've always called it double time. It's also known as the scout pace. Now, I don't know if it has another name, but it's basically 
run ten, walk ten, run twenty, walk ten, run twenty, walk ten, run twenty. And because of that, you can travel very long distances very quickly. It's aerobically intense without being utterly exhausting. And it's something my body can cope with. So I've been doing the two of those. I've also been doing the beep test about twice a week, which is, uh, I don't know if you did in high school, but it's literally two beeps and you run between two points, 20 meters apart between the beeps. So it's like beep, run beep run and the beeps get closer and closer and closer together and uh it's usually used as a as a fitness test but actually if you use it the right way it's a very effective form of aerobic exercise so the ex i'm getting back to that and i'm getting back to that because no matter how few there are if there are people who are looking to me as a role model i need to be a good role model I need to be the best me that I can be. I need that. To f I need it for me, because I need to be able to look in a mirror again. And uh, I need it for the kids in my life. There's seven, soon to be eight of them in my life. Nine, ten, actually. Holy crap! Soon to be eleven. Holy. People, stop breeding. God damn it. And, um, you know, you need to be a good... I need to be a good role model for them. I need to be healthy for myself. I need to be able to look in a mirror again. I need to get my dysphoria and my eating disorders back under control. Not least because I want to enjoy my 40s. You know, I'm not going to cut a swathe through the female population of Dublin. I've never been that person. I mean, I slept with the same number of people I've kissed. And I haven't kissed very many people. It's, you know, kind of like way less than this. So, um, that's not going to happen. But there's other things I could do. I could, I, I mean, I would really like to take up swordfit, which is like crossfit with swords. I need a baseline of fitness for that. Um, I'd like to get back to sparring. I enjoyed it. Although, I basically, I have to start from scratch. I... There's video series I want to do that I need some degree of physical strength for. And more than anything else, I need to look good. I need to feel that I look good when I look in a mirror. I don't need to feel like I'm a monster, which I do at the moment. And it's one of the reasons I haven't spoken about my, my surgery is this for me is part of my recovery. So until I finish this recovery, I'm not ready to record about that because I want be able to talk about the whole process everything yeah anyway that's basically what i wanted to talk about today just the the, the craziness of realizing that you're a role model or you will probably be a role model and that it's a horrible realization that you are and that god damn my hair is terrible and that um That you need to be a good role model, but in a way, you also need to be a good role model for yourself. You have to be able to look in the mirror and feel pride in yourself. And I'm working on that. It's not going well, but I'm working on it. Anyway, I'll be back again tomorrow with Diablo 3, Monday with Fallout 3, and Tuesday with another vlog. And I actually will be here on Tuesday with a vlog. I've just been gradually getting shit together. And despite what that looks like, I'm not sponsored by Pringles. I wish I was. Anyway, be good. Have a great day. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.